What's up YouTube? It's another episode of the How To Guy. Today I wanted to talk about the Sony A6400. It's a really cool little camera and it's got a lot of features that I look for in a camera. Flippy screen, built-in microphone jack, shoots 4K, really stable, good slow motion settings. And for the price, it's probably the most affordable camera you can get with such good quality. So we've got a lot to get through today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button. We really appreciate all the new people that are subscribing to the channel. So let's get started right now. This lens has optical steady shot. So in theory, it should be stable, but that's not actually the case. Optical steady shot doesn't help that much. And if you don't have a big gimbal for this camera, how do you get smooth footage? Using this camera strap is actually the best way to smooth out your footage. The most affordable, it comes with your camera. So the idea is to keep pressure down on your hands when you're filming. You can do this forward or downwards. You can point your screen upwards to film and see what you're doing. And there's a small bench over here. And if I wanted to get some perspective, all I need to do is put some downward pressure on the strap and then slowly pan your shots across. So keep this method in the back of your mind next time you're actually out shooting something, give it a try. You might be surprised how smooth your footage can be without a gimbal. The A6400 has a slow and quick setting available on the camera. Let's look at how you can do those in your videos. Set your camera to S and Q. Open the second tab at the top and go to page 1-9. Go to your S and Q settings. Notice it says a record setting of 30 and frame rates of 120p. And this is four times slow motion because you're taking 120p and dividing it by four to give you 30p. Yes, you could twirl the broom around and speed ramp everything up to make it look super awesome. Just another day on the farm. If you want to speed up your footage, then set your record setting to 60p and your frame rate to 30fps. This will speed up your footage twice as fast. A good way to add to your story. One of the cool things about the Sony A6400 is it's got an external microphone jack. That's one of the main reasons I liked it. So if you notice that if you did mount an external microphone jack on the horseshoe, the problem is the horseshoe might block your screen a little while. I think this particular adapter is about 15 bucks, but it makes your life a lot easier. And this is the small rig culture adapter, which solves that problem and mounts your audio adapter on the left. From the side, you can actually monitor your audio levels, which is pretty cool. And most importantly, if you want to do vlogging or you want to film anything on YouTube on a tripod, you've got your screen. This little Rode Wireless Go has a receiver and an actual microphone, which I'm wearing at the moment. It's got a built-in microphone as it is on the side there, so you don't actually have to buy a lav mic. I just find the lav mic gives you slightly better quality sound. The Rode has three volume settings. I suggest you leave it on the middle setting. But this microphone, the Rode Wireless Go, is probably the best and most affordable option that you can get for a wireless lav mic. And it takes your shooting to the next level because you can get so creative with your shooting. Let me show you what I mean. I'm using the Image and Edge mobile app to frame myself up. You can download the Image and Edge mobile app on Android or on the App Store. Simply download it. On your A6400, go to the Network tab and then click Control with Smartphone. Make sure that's turned on. Then go to the connection, make sure your Wi-Fi and your Bluetooth are switched on. Wait for it to connect and you'll see the barcode. Scan the QR code with your app and then you should be able to connect when you click OK. So once you've connected the Image and Edge mobile app to your mobile phone, you can frame yourself up. And if you've got a Rode Wireless Go, you can walk into the scene and say, Hello, this is the Sony X6400 testing the Rode Wireless Go from roughly 10 feet away from the camera, from roughly 20 feet away from the camera. I can also zoom in remotely. 35 feet away from the camera, 50 feet away. Is it still working? One of the coolest things you can invest for, the Sony A6400. For the best sound on your movie page 2-9, go to your audio recording levels and set that to 17. So this tip is using the A6400 and a camera slider to actually get some really cool cinematic stuff in your videos. Now this camera slider is a relatively affordable one. It's made by Newer. It's 39.3 inches long. It's quite a beast. And I can operate this thing with my mobile phone. Now this thing serves two purposes. The first being you can get some cinematic cool shots and movement in your scene. And secondly, you can do movement time lapses and interval shooting with your Sony A6400. Let me show you how this thing works really fast. So you've got a little button on the side. 
Once you power that on, you'll actually scan using your mobile phone and it'll have a code at the top. So you download an app, it's called Smart Snap, I think it is. And you have an A and a B point. So as you can see, it moves along really smoothly. It's panning and tilting the axis as it goes and you can control that with these little adjustment screws on the front. I often use this in all my videos just to create a little bit of a different angle, a different perspective. It's not as boring as just a talking head or you can focus in on a central point and move the camera head pointing in that direction. Great for time lapses. Let me show you how the interval shooting works and then I'll show you an example time lapse. Set your camera dial to manual then go to shoot mode or drive mode, page 3-14 of the first tab and go down to interval shooting. Make sure interval shooting is enabled. Set that on. Your shooting start time is the time it takes before you push the shutter button until it takes the first photo. Then you need to specify the shooting interval. How many seconds should it wait before it takes a photo? Every three seconds it'll take a photo. The next thing you need to do is go to the number of shots. 190 will give you 9 minutes and 27 seconds. Don't worry about AE tracking. Shooting in silence you can put on because then it doesn't make a noise every photo it takes. And that's it. You should be able to get some cool movement in your scene with this dolly and this function. So for most of this video I've been using the kit lens. What is the lowest possible price you can pay for a lens that's still pretty good? The best lens for the Sony a6400 and probably the rest of the Sony Alpha series. I think the Sigma 16mm f1.4 is probably number one. Now there's nothing wrong with the kit lens. If you've bought the Sony a6400 and you have the kit lens, it's pretty good. It's got f3.5 aperture, it's got built-in optical steady shot, which only the Sony lenses actually have. Since the Sony a6400 doesn't have built-in image stabilization or IBIS, you need a lens with some kind of optical steady shot. Alternatively, you can buy a gimbal which you know gets a little bit expensive this kit lens is not bad the only place that it actually falls apart a little bit and it's not terrible is low light low light it's not that great it hasn't got the biggest aperture f3.5 this one's got an f1.4 aperture i've done tests with this thing at night when it was at least 30 minutes after sunset and it still gives you a pretty good image with very low noise what about cinematic settings? Well, if you go to the picture profiles 11-14 on the first tab, you'll see picture profiles. You can cycle through different exposures, different looks. Some are similar to log, but I like picture profile too. And if you click right on your little thumbnail, you can see more settings. So the black levels, the intensities of the black, I've set mine to plus three, which means they're not as intense as if you go under zero. The gamma, I've set mine to cine four, Black Gamma, which is the intensity of that range, I've set mine to the middle. Your knee value prevents overexposure, set that to auto. Color mode is pro, which is Sony's default color science. Color phase, leave that to zero, and your color depth is your intensity or the luminance of your RGB CMYs. You can copy those settings. Detail, that's the sharpness, leave that at zero. And with these you should be able to get some cinematic shots with not too much color grading. Pretty cool. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that subscribe button. Maybe hit a like or a comment. We really appreciate it. And see you again next time.